jail. jail. <laughs> Did 12 years. 12 got years. Got out, interviewed, said he kept it real, brought him cars, gave him 50,000. Uh, made mention that ain't no smut on his name. He ain't never been a rat. Mm. Caught a gun case. But eventually he, he flipped. Heard somebody named OTF Jam. They said they've been calling him a rat. Rat, 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 rat. And basically he said, okay, I'm a rat. Well, watch this. A popular rap artist is behind bars after a shocking arrest as authorities accuse him of being connected to an alleged murder for hire plot. Chicago rapper Dirk Banks, better known by his stage name. It looks like the streets are finally starting to react to Lil Dirk's recent arrest because it seems bodies are beginning to drop. According to sources, the first casualty related to this case is none other than OTF Jam's baby mama who was offed. Octavia Redmond was shot to death last month while on her route near 121st and South Harvard. Police say someone drove up, shot Redmond multiple times, and then drove away. As most people familiar with the case know, OTF Jam has been rumored to be a snitch, allegedly wearing a wire and gathering information on Lil Dirk. With his name tied to Dirk's indictment, it seems the consequences consequences are already playing out in the city of Chicago. Reports suggest that the city is in a heightened state of paranoia, with people speculating that more violence could follow. Those who are believed to have snitched on Lil Durk may now be seen as targets, with rumors flying that there could be more retaliation on the way. Let's dive in deeper. So Lil Durk's year has taken a complete 180. Earlier in February, he was celebrating the peak of his career, having won his first Grammy and scoring a major Billboard hit with his song All My Life featuring J. Cole. Now, just a few months later, in October, Dirk is behind bars, facing some of the most serious accusations of his life. According to court records, he's being accused of masterminding a Dirk for hire that resulted in the death of Quan Do Rondo's cousin back in 2022. A popular rap artist is behind bars after a shocking arrest as authorities accuse him of being connected to an alleged for hire plot. Chicago rapper Dirk Banks, better known by his stage name. One of the biggest angles in this story revolves around speculation that Dirk was betrayed by one of his own close affiliates, OTF Jam. On October 25th, shortly after a federal criminal complaint was unsealed, details surfaced accusing Lil Dirk of placing a bounty on Quando Rondo's head. The complaint alleges that Dirk paid five men to carry out this brazen Emder attempt. Almost immediately, rumors began circulating that OTF Jam was the person who may have played a role in getting Dirk caught, with sources claiming that Jam had been secretly working as an informant, allegedly even wearing a wire to collect evidence. Prominent figures in the hip-hop community in including WAC 100 and DJ Academics, have openly discussed the rumors about OTF Jam. WAC 100, during an interview on Vlad TV, provided some background on Jam's situation, stating he did 12 years, got out, interviewed, said he kept it real, brought him cars, gave him $50,000, made mention that ain't no smudge on his name, he ain't never been a rat, caught a gun case, but eventually he flipped. Put in the jam. <laughs> did 12 years. 12 Got years. out, interviewed, said he kept it real, brought him cars, gave him 50,000. Uh, made mention that ain't no smut on his name, he ain't never been a rat. Mm. Caught a gun case, but eventually he, he flipped. DJ Vlad added fuel to the conversation, agreeing with Wack and saying he had allegedly been wearing a wire for the last two years. OTF Jam did 12 years for 10. He got out in 2022 right around the same time of the Kwando situation. And he allegedly had been wearing a wire for the last two years. From 22 to 20. Additionally, Chicago rapper King Yella also shared his thoughts, saying he had heard from a source within OTF that someone had snitched on Dirk, specifically naming OTF Jam. Somebody named OTF Jam, they said they'd been calling him a rat. Rat, 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 rat. And basically he said, okay, I'm a rat. Yeah, watch this. As if to confirm this further, multiple blogs and media outlets are reporting that OTF Jam's name is actually listed in the indictment as a police informant, making these accusations appear even more credible. But this whole situation only gets murkier because despite all the rumors, there's no actual documentation that ties OTF Jam to Lil Durk's indictment. Neither the criminal complaint filed against the five suspects in connection to Quando Rondo's cousin's death nor Lil Durk's own indictment mentions Casey Hester, also known as OTF Jam, by name. The indictment does refer to a witness and includes some initials to conceal the identities of those involved. However, there's no mention of KH or any reference that definitively connects back to OTF Jam. 
OTF Jam's background only adds to the mystery. Born Casey Hester, he was convicted of a shooting in 2010 and served 12 years in prison. He was released in February 2022, only to be arrested again on a warrant in May 2023 for issues related to that same case, though the exact status of his current charges is unclear. Recently, OTF Jam released a song that stirred up even more speculation because of his lyrical references to Lil Durk and mentions of violence. In the track he raps, Smirk is the voice. You heard what he said, so bullets behind it, we ain't finna tussle. Smirk is the voice, you heard what he said, some bullets behind it, we ain't finna tussle. Love Ernie sitting in that chair with a hunt. Later in the verse, he continues, only be rapping too off me a rapper so 4 Nem will have something to put in their music. These lines have fueled the belief that there's some level of tension or hidden intentions within Dirk's circle. The gossip around OTF Jam took a darker turn when rumors began circulating that Lil Dirk might have had Jam's child's mother, Octavia Redman, offed. The motive behind her alleged emder? Dirk allegedly discovered that Jam had been wearing a wire, collecting information on him for law enforcement. There are also rumors that Dirk might have had a man named Stefan Mack offed as retaliation for the K-ing of his own brother, Dithang. The emder of Octavia Redmond, a 48-year-old postal worker, was a brazen and tragic event. She was offed in broad daylight on July 19, 2024, while delivering mail in the West Pullman area of South Chicago. Redmond was shot multiple times around 11.40 a.m. and later died at Advocate Christ Medical Center. Octavia Redmond was shot to death last month while on her route near 121st and South Harvard. Police say someone drove up, shot Redmond multiple times, and then drove away. Her shooter's getaway car was found abandoned and burned in a neighboring area shortly after the attack. In August, law enforcement released surveillance footage of the incident, revealing more details about how the fatal shooting unfolded. The video reportedly shows a masked assailant getting into a stolen vehicle a few blocks away from where the shooting occurred. The shooter exits the vehicle near the crime scene, disappears from view for a short time, and then reappears, returning to the car after carrying out the fatal attack. Police say someone drove up, shot Redmond multiple times, and then drove away. According to investigators, the person they're looking for was seen near 70th and South Campbell before... Months later, a 15-year-old boy was arrested in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, and identified as Redmond's KIR. However, the motive for her emder has yet to be disclosed, fueling more speculation. Breaking news at this hour, a 15-year-old boy is charged with shooting and killing an on-duty U.S. Postal Service worker. He's accused of 48-year-old Octavia Redman on 121st at Harvard back in July. The young suspect has been charged with felony first-degree emder and was extradited back to Chicago, where he was arraigned at the Cook County Juvenile Court. He is scheduled to face the court on November 1st. Then there's the case of Stefan Mack, who also met a tragic end in Chicago's Roseland neighborhood on January 7th, 2022. Mack was leaving the Youth Peace Center when he was ambushed by two assailants who got out of a car and opened fire. It was a violent scene on that fateful afternoon, as Mack became the target of a sudden and deadly attack. Tragically, he was struck and offed. A security guard who happened to be nearby was also hit by the gunfire, but fortunately survived his injuries. The brazen nature of Max Emder, occurring in broad daylight, left a lasting impact on the community. Nearly two years after the shooting, in December 2023, federal authorities announced indictments in connection to Max Emder. A federal grand jury in Chicago charged two men, 24-year-old Anthony Montgomery Wilson and 23-year-old Preston Powell, in what was described as a Emder for Hire plot. Both men were indicted on charges of Emder for Hire, as well as related gun charges. The indictment suggested that there were orchestrated, premeditated motives behind Max Kang, although specific details regarding who may have ordered the attack were not publicly revealed. However, as with the other cases connected to OTF Jam and Lil Durk, official documentation directly linking any of these individuals remains scarce. Publicly available records haven't substantiated claims tying Max's death directly to Lil Durk or any ongoing feuds within the hip-hop community. Now, let's dive into the chain of events that led to the tragic loss of Quando Rondo's cousin Lil Pop during that fateful trip to LA. It was August 18th, and Quando Rondo had just landed in LA with his crew, which included his sister and his cousin Lil Pop. Like many rappers in the game, Quando followed the common tradition of tapping in with local affiliates whenever you're in their city. Quando is connected with a crip set in LA, so naturally he reached out to let them know he was there. 
Who he tapped in with exactly isn't clear, but it's pretty typical to connect with your own set for safety, especially if you're known in the streets. But things took a dark turn after this. Not long after he tapped in, OTF and Lil Durk's crew allegedly had not only Quando's location, but also where he was staying and all the details of his itinerary. Now it's still up in the air how OTF got this information so quickly. Was it just a coincidence, or did someone leak the info? Either way, as soon as Quando landed, it seemed like OTF was suddenly aware of his every move. Move. After learning Quando's whereabouts, it's said that Dirk's people moved fast. Flights, rental cars, private jets, everything was booked urgently, as OTF members rushed to LA. The urgency wasn't random either. Reports say that a bounty had been placed on Quando's head, allegedly by a co-conspirator one, the main person financing this operation. Many speculate that co-conspirator one is actually Lil Dirk, given his high rank and resources in OTF. It's his label, his credit cards that were reportedly used for booking all of this. Flights, hotels, rental cars. The setup seemed all too organized, with multiple people involved in what looks like a revenge mission. We believe that co-conspirator one seems to be aiming at somebody who's a boss within the OTF organization that could call sh that could put money, money up and also promise aiming at someone who would be Dirk or it could be um, Dirk's brother who passed, but the only person living would be Dirk, it could be Dirk. It Once OTF landed in LA, they moved like clockwork. They got what they needed, cars, hotels, ski masks, firearms. They even communicated using coded messages to avoid suspicion. Eventually, they all gathered near Quando's hotel, knowing his entire schedule, even when and where he'd be heading next. On the day of the ambush, Quando was driving a black Escalade with OTF members tailing him in a white BMW. They tracked him discreetly, trailing his every move. It's said that Quando wasn't even aware he was being followed. When they finally caught up with him at a gas station, they wasted no time. OTF's crew parked nearby hopped out and began firing. The tragic part is, Quando himself was inside the vehicle, but his cousin, Lul Pab, was outside when the shots rang out. Pab was hit, but Quando was fortunate enough to make it through unharmed. Quando, the man who was most likely their actual target, literally escaped without a scratch, while his cousin didn't survive. Shots fired, a fight taken to the streets, and this chaotic scene, the ending of a shooting that started in Los Angeles, California. Sheriff's deputies pulling out a man who had been shot in an... Savannah rapper Quando Rondo, a passenger in that car, frantic at the... Afterward, the crew gathered at a food spot to settle the financials. They talked about how the money from this hit would be split up, who would get what share. And once everything was sorted, they quickly left LA and headed straight back to Chicago. Now, Lil Durk had set himself up to stay clear of any direct ties to the whole situation. He made sure to tell the crew, Look, even though you're using the OTF credit cards, don't book anything under my name, my family's name, or anyone remotely linked to me. Dirk's intent was to be nowhere in the official paper trail, and the reason we know he specifically instructed co-conspirator 3, who many think is cooperating with the feds, is because this person was tasked with booking the private jet for OTF. Dirk wanted to make it clear, don't use his name for anything, and keep him out of it as much as possible. Once the crew got back, the payments were handled by another OTF member, likely OTFD. He was the one in charge of making sure everyone involved was paid and kept quiet, so Dirk wouldn't need to get involved in any direct dealings. And, for a while, it looked like things were going according to plan. That is, until someone allegedly started talking. And that's where OTF Jam comes into the picture. But this lack of concrete evidence hasn't stopped speculation from spreading though, especially since there's been no official statement from OTF Jam or his legal team. As a result, rumors continue to circulate in both the media and on social platforms. 